Coming up on the FTC Open Alliance Show, 12737 Electric Mayhem White is on to talk about their progress for the Into the Deep season. You'll hear about Team Dynamics, get an overview of their CAD state, including what they're looking at doing for a level three climb, and then we'll dive more into some of the different prototypes that they've been working on and take a look at their code base. Let's get ready for the FTC Open Alliance Show. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Studica Robotics is everything your team needs to build, learn, and compete. Check out their FTC starter kit, intake hub kit, and odometry wheel options at studica.com slash robots. Teams in the USA can get up to 25% off and apply for grants at studica.com slash robots. And welcome into the Open Alliance show. It's going to be 12737 Electric Mayhem White coming in. Uh, we had one of the other Electric Mayhem teams on earlier. We're delighted to have this team as well, too. So, guys, why don't you introduce yourselves? Let us know what you do on the team. And I think something really interesting to talk about is kind of how these different teams are structured within your organization. Sure. Uh, hi, my name is Avi. I am one of the helpers on our programming sub. Hi, I'm Austin. I... I'm a programmer and I'm also the co-captain of 12737. Uh, I am Nate. I am part of Mechanical and the CAD sub teams, and I am also a co-captain. I am Josh, and I do Mechanical and CAD. So our team is um, re really new to FIRST. Pre a majority of our team is rookies. So a, a huge mission goal of our team this year is to really focus on like the learning aspect of first and really learning all the skills that requires you to be successful as a first team along with this we're also teaching the first core values which we stand as groundwork so looking at you know you mentioned that you're first year so are there just two teams with your organization for ftc or is there one for like each grade how does that work so we have two FTC teams, the 12736 and 12737. And we also have F an FOC team, 4930, and then the FLL team. Awesome. Really cool to see that whole breadth of first programs as well, too, for that. Um, just, just overall, thumbs up, thumbs down. How are you guys loving uh, your first year and first in the game so far? Um, we're, we're really enjoying this year. It's, it's, it's been a fun game to design uh, around, especially with uh, all the, the new challenges. I can speak to that. Uh, my first separate year on FTC, I'm loving it. Very yeah, cool. This is second full year, and it's been a lot of fun working through the design process. Well, let's talk a little bit more about design, by the way, as well, too. I've been reading up on your OA blog a little bit. What do you have in here? You've been posting a lot of different CAD stuff on that, uh, and we actually have some of your uh, CAD brought up that we're going to have on screen, too. So talk to me more about some of your design process for that. I'd love to hear more about that, and we got some cool prototypes to show a little bit later, too. Yeah, so this is our current version of the CAD. It is updated as of today, which is the 30th. And the way I've structured it in this is do each separate uh, sub-assembly in the. So if you want to just take a look at the climb system, you can just take a look at the climb. And drivetrains like that, same for all the other subsystems. So just going over the flows I have here, we have a bunch of electronics. We have Navex, uh, Navex have uh, uh, limelight right here. Uh, we have Lincoln's, full hubs, so the like. And we're also using the relatively new, not the perfect version of it, but the work fund optical odometry sensor, which will ideally place dead wheel down. So kind of next steps for your team, we'll dive a little bit more into once you show your mechanical prototypes, but uh, what's kind of next for your team in terms of CAD, or is this pretty well complete? So this is pretty complete. Currently uh, working on camming all of the different poly curb, ideally they're assembled. Very cool. And I noticed that your team's using Onshape on there as well too. Uh, how has your experience been with Onshape so far and would you recommend it to other teams? My experience so far has been very good, and I very easy with, and I would recommend. Yeah, uh, to to sort of speak further on that end is, this is my seventh year and first third year in FTC, and it, and it's and Onshape's been really good for onboarding 
um, newer people really quickly. And we used to use Autodesk Inventor, which would take a lot of time for us to train people on how to use. But now with the new addition of Onshape, it's, it's been really good. For me. Yeah, every year I went in uh, full swing of that and it's on the run. Uh, one other really good thing about Onshape is that it is browser based and cloud based, especially with it's uh, OS compatible for every operating system, uh, Mac, Windows. And because it's on the cloud, you if it's on one person's computer, it's on everyone's computer, which makes it really nice, the whole design process. Yeah, really cool. And uh, as we talk, by the way, we got to get into some of these cool prototypes that you have uh, on your table as well. And I'm not sure if you're going to mention it, but something I got to ask you too, when I was reading your OA blog, you went back and forth between the level three climb uh, that you're looking to. I'd love to hear more about that as well too. And some of the uh, thought process behind that. So um, I'll start with the level three climb. When we, when we started the season, we, uh, and maybe you want to, uh, one of the uh, big things we said is uh, we saw that the level three climb was worth a lot of points, so we really pushed to get that level three climb. But then, as sort of the season progressed, and we were starting to run to some dead um, deadlines, what we sort of decided is, hey, maybe level two would be uh, more achievable in our time frame and be easier to get. But our CAD was so far ahead of schedule that we were able to continue with this. So for some quick content so that, this is one of the fastest times we've ever had a CAD finished. Usually it's done around like mid-November. And this is for both the green and white team. We've got it done for uh, November hit. And so going back to the climb idea, uh, our mentor was talking at the coaches meeting about a possible clarification on the rules. Uh, so when climbing, you cannot support yourself on the submersible. However, you can uh, push up against the side. I have the full field CAD in here. And so the rule change is, not rule change, but specification is you can brace yourself against this burn. It makes it a lot easier to climb. And I've tested the geometry. I apologize for the bad Wi-Fi. But this is the general idea of what our climb is going to be. We are going to be going up with the slides and so it's very so we are going to be going up with main slides on the go build a viper slides first, then catching onto here, pulling yourselves up, and then reinforcing yourselves with stationary claws that are just on aluminum extrusion right here. So that they don't move at all besides rotating like this. Yeah, like that. And then after that, we keep holding onto these and we extend these further up so we can uh hopefully get to the very cool on that and i love all the thought process that's gone into it um you know looking uh at some of the stuff on your table as well too like i said i didn't know if you had the climber or not uh, a prototype or anything like that but uh what else do you want to talk about from some of the cool stuff that you are working on that you have on the table there passive outtake where you can just push up against the basket and it'll automatically into the Very cool. What else do you want to showcase? Yeah, uh, our main take this, this is not the final version. This is uh, one we printed first. We have the more updated one in CAD here. Yeah, yeah. But what we have is uh, inspired by one of the teams from the GoBuilder Robot and 3D, where they have Servo using the GoBuilder here you have purchased those and this and in intake like it intakes the uh, samples in then this so this is a uh, entire intake is based off of two different designs from two different teams this and was from one of the go build go on three days then really early on in the season found a really cool team that has the hand rotate up here so that it can I like, go back to the robot that the, they can dump in our bucket which then goes up and outtakes ask it
Cool. So looking at, you know, overall from, you know, you mentioned you took some inspiration. I'm guessing that's Project Peacock. You were talking about with the robot in three days uh, and what they were doing as well, too. Um, so what are some things that maybe you tried otherwise that you didn't go with um, as you went through your different prototyping processes? So one of the biggest things that we spent um, prototyping besides the climbers was the intake. And... Um, and the the intake is um was is really unique in this case that it's um it's based off swift slides ids which were uh, a decision that we were deciding to go with or not and yeah so uh different topic but doing studio live stream which is the proto alongside os we came up with this idea for an intake uses rubber bands to ideally wrap around here and hold in specimen that we can just pick it up and then only use the tension of the rubber bands to hold it in place. <laughs> but after this, we did figure out that this was not very efficient at all because it, it because if we're picking up from inside the submersible, we go down and then pick up like that, which we've learned the hard way that uh, touch it on it is a very good design strategy to have. So that requires precision. Yeah, it's all about your cycle times, right? And how can you optimize that uh, to get as many cycles as possible for things. Before we go into programming uh, for sex, we have some great things to talk about. Anything else that you want to talk about mechanical side before we move on? Uh, we are also using the Limelight 3A, similar to, to Green Team. This is the mount I designed for it, and this will help us with localization. Well, that sounds like a great segue for programming then, right? To go more into uh, where you're currently at right now. And I don't know where, how specific we're going to get into the Limelight 3 itself, but I'd love to hear more about what your team is doing from that side. And I know uh, you got a few things in GitHub right now might want to talk about too. Um, so our, so the way we've sort of been doing programming here on our, on our team has been a majority, um, uh, a majority of our team, as I mentioned earlier, is due to, uh, FTC, uh, first and FTC in general. So one of the, well, one of the really interesting things about our team is that we have a huge want for people to learn programming. A lot of people are very interested about it. And so... Oh, the way we sort of been doing programming is a lot of our uh, we've had some people who've taken programming classes at our school and and some other people that have self self taught themselves that are performing proficiently. And we we've, we've sort of taken on this more mentorship role of how we're sort of helping these newer students do a majority of the programming. So uh, all the code that you actually see on screen right now is written by someone who didn't know Java a month ago. Yeah. Um, I can speak on that end as well of a lot of the people, again, uh, didn't know much about Java. So we spent a lot of time in September, or late September and most of November. Um, oh. Obviously, uh, yeah, sorry, October. <laughs> Uh, we spent a lot of time going over, especially you'll notice how many comments we may have on the GitHub, um, trying to explain everything that's going on, going through the logic and trying to uh, make sure that everyone can look at this and kind of understand what's going on with the code, with the robot, even if it isn't extravagant or isn't maximally like, you know, isn't super efficient. Everyone knows generally what's going on. And they're learning how to code with Java, both syntactically, and they're learning how to manage the logic um, with the code. And that's our goal, and we're really happy being at that. And so, like sensor-wise, continuing on from the from our last couple of seasons, we are using as many sensors as we possibly can in not in uh, on our robots to make sure that we have. Um, precise uh placement and we know that our and we're fully localized with the field like nate stated earlier we have the the limelight 3a to help us uh calculate our position off the april tag coordinates and then we also are using the optical odometry unit to 
boost, uh, further aid the limelight threes, um, um, fish localization function. And then we also have encoders on pretty much every single subsystem so that we can in set go to positions and automate as much of the code as and automate as much functions as can. I want to ask you about the uh, SparkFun uh, device as well, too. So, you know, obviously we've seen so many teams using odometry pods and stuff like that. And this instead, you were able to just put it a little bit away from the tile. It's able to help with uh, or do your odometry that way. Um, is that something that you think is going to be viable for this year? Have you done any testing with it yet? Uh, so the 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 laser odometry, you know, we, we really haven't fully tested it yet. We We've had uh, – we had one of our – demo bots um a couple of us over the summer sort of played with it and we're able to get uh the laser odometry thing uh like working on our demo bot um but we really haven't had any testing with it this season in or on the field yet but sure. we we do think it'll be a very viable option this season because of it it saves a lot of space on on the robot and it's with such a simple thing to be able to place on your robot. It seems like a pretty good choice to put on. Well, we look forward to some updates in the open Alliance uh, uh, on chief Delphi as well. Two of your team posting that too. So I'm sorry, go ahead. You had something else to add. So uh, as far as I'm aware, the optical odometry is close to, if not the exact same position as normal dead wheel odometry. This was gotten from, I don't remember exactly which team developed it, but the team that developed it did do, side by side test where they took the laser odometry and the table odometry and compared the two. They went to basically the exact same place. Yeah, really looking forward to seeing, uh, you know, what teams decide to move forward with that. So like I said, keep an eye out on the uh, uh, Cheap Delphi uh, uh, link and check out 12737 more in their build thread. Uh, guys, before I let you go, I got to ask, um, you know, we showed your GitHub and your uh, Onshade cat as well too. Is there any chance those are going to maybe be shared publicly in the future that we could check that out? Uh, yes, both are actually currently shown on our FTC Open Alliance page. Uh, we have both links for the CAD and GIF. So if you go to ftcopenalliance.org, you'll be able to find uh, where that is well. So make sure you do uh, check in on this team and follow their progress. Guys, thank you so much for coming on and talking to us more about your progress. We can't wait to see how you develop and what you do. And, of course, best of luck uh, during the rest of the season. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. StudiCut Robotics is everything your team needs to build, learn, and compete. Check out their FTC starter kit, intake hub kit, and odometry wheel options at studica.com slash robots. Teams in the USA can get up to 25% off and apply for grants at studica.com slash robots. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video.